I'm fishing for pike or bigger walleye. Look at that. Hit it, hit it. There, you got it. Honestly, neither one of us was expecting anything this size in the shallow water. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. When they do that, pike do that. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Yozuri Fishing Lures, fish the best. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. So you think the life of the Fishing Canada guys is all fun and glory, eh? After all, we've got the ultimate dream job, getting paid to go fishing. Well, my friends, think again. Oh yeah, the fishing part of the job simply can't be beat, but it's all those little added extras that can sometimes bring the ultimate job status down to its knees. Case in point, this particular trip. But we'll get to that a little later. Joining us on this trip is our good buddy, Steve Nizwicki. Our driving destination is First Air Service on Cary Lake in Northern Ontario. We've been here a few times and it's a top-notch outfit that flies into several outpost camps, as well as a world-class trip to the Sutton River for the Brook Road Adventure of a lifetime. In fact, they're so dialed into detail here that Mel, who runs the business, had a special presentation for us. Yeah, yeah, so I've got outhouse phobia. As if a bucket's gonna help. After all the fun and games had come to an end, it was time to board the plane and push off. Something we never get tired of is sitting in a float plane, hearing the roar of the engine, and of course, looking out the windows at the vast amount of flora and fauna. It's nothing short of breathtaking. Still to this day, and with the amount of flying we've done, we're constantly staring out into the green abyss and shooting pictures and videos with phones and cameras. And the only thing better than flying over the North Country is landing on an outback lake for a highly anticipated fishing adventure. As we settle in, we find out just how easy it is to unpack and set up camp by some solid preparation work. Hey guys, I just wanna take a minute while we're putting all of our stuff away. Why don't I show you the latest in uh, sleeping bags and compression sacks? Cause it's vital when you're going into the outback, uh, four, five, six guys flying in in a, in a small little beaver. It's important to get your, your volume down and the weight down. So what you've got here in front of you, believe it or not, are all of the essentials that four guys would need to survive for the course of a week. Uh, these bags are really cool because they're rated at zero, but when you pull the compression straps down on the sack and get all of the air out, they get into a nice tight little uh, little number like that. This compression sack is important here when you've got a lot of little goodies, odds and ends, you put them in the sack, you pull down on all the compression straps and get rid of all of the volume of air. Here is kind of cool. This is enough food to last us for at least four days. Four guys, four days worth of food. We also brought in um, tablets to purify the water and also a filter in case we want to actually do some slow filtering as well. All this fits into what? Almost a backpack. So the next time you go out in the outback, think of compressing your stuff. Quantz Lake is a small body of water with a maximum depth of 30 plus feet, which is directly in front of the camp. There's a large fertile bay to the southwest and a long, narrow, shallow arm to the north. It's the perfect size for anglers to try and figure out the fish in just a few days. Although you'll find both pike and walleye here, First Air sells it as a big pike lake with bonus walleye. On this shoot, I'm gonna be the team starter, which means I'm up on the mound first. My relievers, Ant and Steve, will be my closers. In fact, if things go extremely well for me, they may be shooting a second episode. That's why we love fishing in Northern Ontario. The forecast is looking pretty good for the next few days. Sunny, hot, and not much rain. But this isn't our first picnic. The truth of the matter is, when you go on an outback adventure like this, expect anything and everything. We truly don't have a clue what the real conditions are going to be. But I'm fishing for pike. Uh, look at that. 
There, you got it. I'm going to start by trolling and looking for pretty much any signs that indicate fish activity. Don't care if they're pike or walleye, but bigger pike are always on my mind. Trolling is a great way to cover a lot of water in a lake we've never been on. And it allows us to create real-time depths and contours with the quick draw feature on our garment. That's huge. Tiny little pike <laughs> as I'm really in. I sped up my I sped up my retrieve. Give me a jump there, buddy. Not what I'm looking for, but I, I just came up in a real shallow water. Now I'm in, actually in three feet. When I come up to, from 15 to 12 to 6 real quick, and this guy bit. So, but not what I'm after, but it's, what I did notice is that I sped the bait up and he hit it. It was right behind the boat, like really, really close. So I don't know if that's an indication. There we go. I was kind of hoping for that, to be honest with you. If that's an indication of maybe I'm going too slow. Uh, just trolling along, trolling along. I started cranking it in because I wanted to change my bait. And uh, <laughs> that guy hit. So maybe I got to go faster. Maybe I got to troll. Like right now, this boat's going two mile an hour, basically. 198 to 202. Maybe I got to go faster. I'm going to change because because I'm changing depths all the time. This is a good maybe 10, 12 foot bait. I'm gonna change to this guy, which is probably good for six, you know, six to eight foot. I'm up on the flat now. I got three different baits, I can, sizes of baits I can use. Deep, medium, and shallow-ish on the crystal minnows. And I'll just do with that. I might move another, another type of crankbait, maybe a more walleye crankbait, but we'll see. Just gonna play around. When I'm fishing for pike or bigger walleye, this is an interesting fish in that it is probably a perfect eater here. Easy little guy. The perfect eating size walleye. So on these outpost trips, obviously one of your goals is to catch big fish. I'm fishing pike, but I'm in a transitional area where it's kind of shallow, so I, I, I have to run smaller baits. You know, inadvertently, you're going to catch walleye. But that walleye right there, is, it looks tiny, but that's the best tasting walleye. And I'll show you something with, these, with a lot of these lodges. So the slot limit, the size limit here is one fish over 18 and the rest under 18. This guy's probably a 16-ish. Look at that, right on the money of 16 inches right there. You're gonna get a bonus of those guys, even when you're fishing pike. That is perfect, so you're allowed your limit of those or one over the 18 inch mark and then the rest under. My trolling pattern is catching fish, but I can't get onto anything solid. I'm gonna stick with it a bit longer, but I'm not gonna get hung up on it. Ange and Steve are at the other end of the lake and knowing these two guys, they'll be casting hard baits and looking for pike. Steve and I will be in exploration mode for the first portion of this shoot. We're simply looking to get some intel on how the pike are setting up and relay that info to Pete. If we get into anything decent in size, we'll just grab our phones or an action cam and shoot away. It's fun, relaxing, and often rewarding. We've been doing this a lot lately in case we get some great YouTube footage or even inserts for television episodes, much like right now. Look at that. Nice little Jim Dandy. Oh, I just barely got him hooked. There. Nothing huge. But that right there, folks, is a perfect northern pike for eating. Right out of one tiny wheat patch. Nice little northern pike. He's gonna taste good tonight. There's one. Feels okay. You never know here. Go, ready? He doesn't even know he's unhooked yet. There he goes. That's it, beautiful. What? As soon as I came up, but now I went into real shallow water, and I got one. Like I mean shallow. Come here, buddy. 
There, there he goes. I'm fishing, I ran along a 12 foot brake line there, 12 to 14 foot brake line, nothing, nothing, nothing. I saw hooks, I saw hooks. I come in to three to five feet as soon as I got in there. This fish hit and I think, I think I might've had a couple more bites in there actually too. Again, little wee sweet 16, best eating meat in the world. Better than steak, if you ask me. See you, buddy. Hit it, hit it. There, you got it. I want big pike or feed a walleye if I need them or a good walleye. This one's not big again. Another same thing, another perfect 16 incher on the crank. Get in, buddy. Oh, there you go, perfect. That one got off on for me. I mean, these lakes up here are so loaded with these fish. After catching a perfect bunch of eaters by trolling, I knew it's not the deal for me. By the way, if you like catching fish after fish and don't care about giants, then this is the deal for you. I'm hoping for something more solid. Got one right here in the weed bed. Honestly, neither one of us was expecting anything this size in the shallow water. <laughs> My next logical choice is casting with jigs. It's one of my favorite ways to catch pretty much any species of fish that swims. Yep, oh, there's one. Feels very, <laughs> very I don't know-y. Let's put on a big swim bait. Decided to live scope, and try and cherry pick some fish. Ah, it's a nice walleye. I don't know. I went to a bigger, a big bright swim bait, and I got a small walleye on a smaller version of that. Look at, look at how that fish engulfed it. Look at that. That's, you know fish are hungry when they do that right there. Nice, nice little walleye. I'm getting in on a short eye. I saw that, I saw two of these on live scope. I cast to them. I've been casting to, trying to cast to a bunch of fish, uh, just uh, getting off the trolling thing. And I thought, you know what, let's try jigging them. I threw a smaller jig, got a smaller fish. I gotta move out of here because of the shore. And uh, so I thought, you know, I saw two fish move. I, they were 15 feet away on the live scope. I got it kind of pointed straight out and I'm just trolling really slow. You kind of watch the distance on your screen. You're drifting this way. So you're gonna cast, you know, you're already past the fish. That, that time it worked. About, I've taken about 25 casts of fish and never worked, but, but that one did. So maybe I'm onto something. Got one right here in the weed bed. Don't know. It's got to be a pike. I'm going to back troll here, see what I can do. Oh, boy, what am I going to do here? Come on. Oh, I like that. Got a little jig and a, cra and a cabbage patch. I'm going to try it. Put him in my net, but I don't know if he's going to go or not. That's a good one. That's a good one, folks. Oh, my god. Slow down, buddy. It's the guy I've been waiting for. Not bad little piker. That's in a little cabbage patch that I've been fishing. Uh, I've fished it about three times, and I've caught keeper wall, that, like 16 inch walleye out of it. This guy's probably eating 16 inch walleye in there, so. Nice fish, nice fun. Threw a jig in there, and he didn't fight at all. I thought it was another 16 incher. Beautiful. Not bad. Here we go, buddy. on spinning gear. Okay, remember at the top of the show when I alluded to the fact that all is not roses in this job? As this trip went on, the conditions that the big guy doled out to us were nothing short of, now how do I say this in a godly manner? Brutal. And if you haven't noticed yet, do you see the odd flying object that I have circling my boat? Well, as the air temps kept rising, a squadron of hungry horseflies decided that Pete here, along with Ann, Steve, and Vovar, cameraman, were prime eating material. These weren't those mini ankle-biting houseflies you see on Lake Ontario while salmon fishing, nor were they the relentless Canadian deer flies that hit you hard when back-roading into a secluded lake. These were full-fledged, heavyweight champion caliber horseflies. As for the weather conditions on top of the bug conditions, here's some stats that we learned after our trip. We had three days in camp, June 20th to 22nd. 
It was during the summer solstice, June 21st. So essentially, the three longest days of the year with daylight from 5.20 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. Not great for sleeping. Every day of our trip had a feels-like temperature averaging 35 degrees Celsius, which is over 95 Fahrenheit, and every night was almost the same. We had a relative humidity reading of 88%. It ended up being one of the hottest weeks of the year in that part of Ontario. There were forest fires looming all around us. Not only do these conditions affect us as anglers, it affects the fish as well. That all said, as the true lake soldiers that we are, we kept pounding the water to a froth. As Pete plugged away trying to get a jig pattern going, Steve and I found a nice shallow pencil weed patch with scattered lily pads, the perfect hunting area for a big predator. Man, that is something else. Right in the shallow water where he should have been, but honestly, neither one of us was expecting anything this size in the shallow water, even though it's where he should be. But... Oh, oh, oh. Nice. Nice. Hey, baby. That was cool. He, he, he came right at the boat, got that bait. I thought he swallowed it, but look, he's just got that, that back hook. <laughs> now, don't get too excited here, folks, because unfortunately, it turns out my good fishing buddy Steve, well, he's not much of a cameraman. And somehow he completely missed the landing and release of this magnificent fish. Well, he kind of got it. Man, I feel for the boys on that one. Such a great fish and on a jerk bait to boot. Okay, did somebody bring bananas on the boat? Today's hotspot is a shallow cabbage weed point where Pete encountered his big northern bike at the end of the episode. The waypoint on the screen will get you right there. Pete and I discovered this spot on our first day of scouting Quants Lake for both pike and walleye, and Pete returned to it on numerous occasions throughout the trip. Since it's very shallow, Pete concentrated on casting a soft perch-colored jerkbait with a weighted screw lock wide gap hook. If you ever encounter pike in a shallow cabbage bed in northern Ontario, make sure you cover the entire weed bed thoroughly, as the fish could be anywhere. For more hot spots like this one, check out fishincanada.com. Oh boy. Oh boy, folks. Ooh, I like that. When they do that, pipe do that. So here we are, the final morning before the plane comes in to pick us up. We've only got a couple of hours to try and boat something big. As you can see, the weather has turned for the better with a nice overcast sky. Such a welcome reprieve from that relentless blazing sun. But wait, those overcast skies might not mean we're in for some rain. We can smell smoke. The reality is, this is right in the middle of an Ontario forest fire that is devastating the North Country. The sky is literally hidden by a band of thick smoke. We know the plane can't fly and land in these conditions. And we also know that the safest place for us to be right now is on the water. So, back to fishing. While scouting around in the southwest end of the lake, I stumble on a gorgeous, big, shallow cabbage weed bed that just oozes pike and walleye. It's too thick to throw a jig or a treble hook jerk bait, so I'm opting for a soft jerk bait rigged weedless on a single wide gap hook. I'm in three feet of water, and in this little wee cabbage patch that Ange and I found the other day. Look at that guy, Here, buddy. Yeah, you know what? That's a good eating size pike right there. And trust me, these things are delicious. They are absolutely delicious. That's the perfect eater right there. Nice back on them. You get some good meat off of it. Very aggressive fish. That's in two feet of water. And as you can see now, it's gotten overcast and I got a jacket on. All of a sudden it was a, a heat wave. I mean, the worst heat wave of the year so far. This is mid-June. And, uh, and now this weather change is like, this is a 180 for sure. This is like a total change of weather. Don't know what to expect. One. And that's a little pike. Another three pounder. That fish swam on my bait. 
I missed him. And then he swam with it again and I got him. We want another eater. Lots of good eating fish in this lake, man. I'll tell you, if you come up here for an intent on a shore lunch, whoo, you're gonna eat good. Between the walleye and the pike, you're gonna eat real good. Whoa! Oh boy. Oh boy, folks. You never know. He's fighting, he's fighting like he means something. I'm gonna loosen up my drag here a little bit. Ooh, I like that. When they do that, pike do that. It's gotta be a pike, it's not a walleye. Oh, he got off. Oh, man, I got a good hook set on him. Oh, perfect set of cabbage here. Just caught that smaller pike. I weather change in the shallow cabbage like that. I got a good drill on that fish too. Ah, oh, man, I've been waiting. It's a good one, as you saw. <laughs> Look at the way my bait hangs. That <laughs> just hit that. That was another fish. That wasn't my fish. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, <laughs> I'm so I'm so disappointed. You have no idea. Uh, well, when it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. All three of us worked our butts off through the heat and bug wave to try and tie into one of those Quants Lake giants that we keep hearing about. Between Ange and Steve having a camera mishap on their biggest pike encounter of the trip, and then this last fish of mine that, for whatever reason, with a nasty hook set, heavy rod, and 50-pound braided line, just pulled off. Somebody definitely brought bananas. Getting there. Brought to you by the Outdoor Journal Radio Podcast Network. To get to this week's midsummer fishing destination, we first drove north on Highway 400 to Highway 11. We next turned right to continue on 11 at North Bay. We followed 11 all the way to the town of Hearst, where we overnighted at the Companion Motel directly in the heart of town. The next morning, we headed west on Highway 11 to the Hearst Air float plane base on Cary Lake and finally flew into the Quants Lake Outpost Camp, which is about a 50-minute flight from the airbase. The three-bedroom camp has a propane fridge, a propane stove, and propane lights. And there's a barbecue and picnic table just outside the front of the building. Hearst Air offers an array of excellent fishing destinations, catering from pike and walleye to an incredible brook trout adventure on the fabled Sutton River. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Prince Craft Boats, the spirit of boating, Garmin, plot your paradise, reel them in and Ontario Canada, in partnership with Destination Ontario. Close captioning for this episode is brought to you by FishingCanada.com, the gateway to your next fishing adventure.